Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2020 My Team Career for the Austrian Grand Prix today. One of my favourite tracks, if not my favourite, on the Formula 1 calendar. So uh, let's hope for uh, another good run today as we have had many good runs here in the past. So uh, R&D chart there, uh, as you can see we are right uh, in the fight uh, to be one of the fastest teams racing points making some gains into this one. Uh, so they could be looking very, very quick uh, to uh, very young drivers in their lineup, though. So uh, they've always tended to uh, to struggle a bit, but uh, particularly Matsushita in race pace has been extremely solid. So uh, with the podium uh, to his name already this season, he'll be one to watch. But uh, we do two consecutive laps in Q1 just to make sure we get through. Because our first lap there was a, a, the odd mistake or two. So uh, just getting up to speed. We're also running. Uh, without uh, traction control uh, in qualifying, I did turn it back on a few laps into the race uh, just because I wasn't quite uh, comfortable with it yet. But uh, here in qualifying, no traction control uh, being run for the first time uh, in a Formula 1 car, uh, as I have been in uh, doing in Formula 2 cars for a long time, uh, not running traction control. But uh, yeah, just not quite up to speed in F1 cars uh, without that. So... Uh, yeah, still need to work on that. But uh, anyway, uh, end of Q1, we get through nice and easy. The Mercedes are topping the session, though. Uh, Roman Grosjean uh, doing a decent job there up in 6th position. We're in 4th. Matsushita doing it all right in 5th. We scroll down, though, and you can see the Hasses of uh, Nick De Vries and George Russell uh, down there at the bottom. They get through, and Pierre Gasly uh, in the AlphaTauri uh, is knocked out. So uh, that's a surprise, as well as Lando Norris in the McLaren way down in 21st. So... Uh, he may have, maybe was caught out by the wet conditions, uh, slightly damp conditions, I'm not sure. Uh, as you saw, the raindrop so there. It wasn't meant to rain. But uh, here in Q2, it's still time for dry tyres, despite rain falling through this whole time. So it's just extremely light rain, just enough to dampen the track and make things just that slight bit greasy, but uh, not enough to warrant uh, wet weather tyres uh, of any t of the two varieties yet. So we get out of pit lane, spinning the wheels up, trying to... Uh, get out of there as quickly as possible because we've got a Haas in front of us and we do not want to do our qualifying lap behind the Haas. They did a great job to get out of Q1, but they certainly won't be getting out of Q2. So uh, we need to uh, swiftly get past him and uh, we do just that and we can get on uh, our way to uh, setting uh, some decent laps here in Q2 and trying to get ourselves into the final part of qualifying. A bit wide out of the final corner, but uh, it is all good. We can come across the line and uh, we will uh, set a uh, decent enough lap time. We go very deep into turn three uh, on our second attempt and uh, have a little uh, bit of a spin uh, on the runoff. And uh, that was uh, the uh, that run uh, over uh, for qualifying. But our first lap uh, should be good enough to get us through uh, into the next session. So I'm not too worried as uh, fastest times are still being set. But uh, we do get through. Roman Grosjean just scrapes through down in ninth position. Uh, Carlos Sainz just about getting through as well. So uh, the McLaren's really struggling for pace, uh, it seems, uh, in this one. Matsushita up in fourth uh, with Danny Rick uh, chasing down the Mercedes of Valtteri Bottas. Verstappen is actually the one to top this session. So uh, an even more mixed up uh, group in uh, in this one. So uh, very, very interesting. And uh, Lewis Hamilton is knocked out in the Mercedes. He's been struggling compared to Bottas uh, now that Mercedes don't have... The uh, over-dominant car, uh, Hamilton's really been struggling, and uh, Potas, uh, the reigning champion, has uh, been doing a much better job uh, keeping the fight going with uh, Daniel Ricciardo. I believe Potas is the championship leader, I'm not 100% sure, it's very, very close between uh, him and Ricciardo, and uh, we're right up there as well, so... It'll be interesting to see how uh, this all uh, evolves uh, by the end of this one. Uh, home race for Daniel Ricciardo in the Red Bull. Alexander Alba doing all right and uh, getting through into Q3 as well. So uh, that really is no excuse there for Hamilton if Albon is getting into Q3 in uh, what's probably the fourth or fifth best car uh, on the R&D chart. Uh, whilst uh, the Mercedes is still uh, right at the top. So yeah, Hamilton really underperforming uh, today in qualifying. But uh, we set our first lap in Q3. We go third fastest. And uh, now we are going to try and improve on that and see uh, if we can get uh, any further up the field. It's still not time for the wet weather tyres, but the pace has significantly reduced uh, between uh, these each qualifying session. But 
Uh, if we get a good lap together, we could improve. And you can see we are improving uh, in the top right there. You can see uh, purple first sector. And uh, we are a few tenths uh, up on our uh, previous time. So now we just need to try and bring this home through the last couple of corners. I can feel the conditions uh, still getting worse and worse. So trying to uh, maximize uh, everything uh, through this final corner using uh, the uh, track space there on the inside. And now the DRS open across the line. We go fastest. And with qualifying complete, let's review our top three today. The Scientist, Bottas and Max Verstappen. Goodbye for now then, but we're really just getting started. Make sure to join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. So I said Austria is a good track for us and a pole position uh, only confirms that. Uh, Bottas, Verstappen and Ricardo fill out the rest of the uh, first uh, two rows of the grid. Romain Grosjean on the fourth row, uh, along, a uh, third row <laughs> alongside uh, Charles Leclerc uh, with Matsushita Albon. Uh, Science and Ocon filling out the top 10. Uh, Matsushita not doing quite as well as I would have imagined, uh, unfortunately, in this final uh, part of qualifying. I thought uh, he would do a little better along with Grosjean, uh, but the Ferrari's doing well in third and fifth, so uh, they're looking solid and uh, are right in the fight uh, with myself and Bottas uh, looking at their pace. And Ricardo, uh, you know, he's been very quick over the season, so despite the, the pace gap there in qualifying, I'm pretty sure he's going to be right there. Uh, come race day so uh, let's see uh, how it all plays out uh, in the race uh, in just a moment's time so uh, yeah this is going to be a, uh, a very very close fight between the uh, group of us at the front this is it then race day in Spielberg for this year's Austrian Grand Prix the grandstands were a sea of red in 2019 thanks to the commemorative hats in honor of the late great Nicky Lauda who took home victory of course back in 1984 and it's a sellout crowd once again here today. It's one of the shortest laps on the calendar today then with seven rights and just three lefts, making up the 10 corners of this high speed circuit. Turn two is barely a corner at all. They'll be flat out through there, a left hand kink into the uphill braking zone of turn three. Turns one, three and four are all potential opportunities to overtake. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. The Scientist lines up on pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Verstappen, Ricardo, Charles Leclerc and Grosjean, Matsushita, Albon, Sainz and Esteban Ocon, Hamilton, Joe, Daniel Kvyat and De Vries, Russell, Perez, Pierre Gasly and Antonio Giovinazzi. Magnussen, Latifi, Norris, and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track and get this Grand Prix underway. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. A points finish. Okay, I mean, sure, we can aim for that, but I think we can do a little bit better from pole position. And uh, we are now looking... Uh, at the strategy, it looks like we're going to go for two sets of soft tyres uh, to the mediums. Nothing else was really uh, ever going to be as fast as that cloudy, uh, partly cloudy conditions all day. So uh, no weather to worry about as we get ready to go to the five red lights. And away we go then for the Austrian Grand Prix, a launch off the line. Bit of wheel spin without the aid of traction control there, but we get off the line well enough. And we are able to maintain the lead, leaving a bit of space there, but Bottas wasn't able to go for a move. And we hold the lead uh, through the first corner and up uh, towards turn three. A bit of a uh, off track there through turn two, uh, but uh, we maintain the lead. We got a hit there from behind. Valtteri Bottas punting us off circuit, and he slips on through as well as the Ferrari of Max Verstappen. Here's the uh, replay on, on board with Bottas. He was up on the curb and just couldn't slow down as quickly as we were and gives us a bump off circuit. He was not penalised in any way for that. We're going to go back up the inside of Max Verstappen though and uh, reclaim that position. But uh, Bottas uh, getting uh, a little bit uh, late on the brake pedal there and uh, pump, pump, bumping us off the road. So uh, that's unfortunate. And uh, he's already got a big lead as we are uh, really uh, defending quite harshly uh, from the field behind as we uh, were 
uh, pretty slow. But now Ricardo's got past Verstappen. That's how much we've held up the uh, Ferrari driver. Daniel Ricciardo is up into third position as we're really struggling here uh, on the opening lap to uh, just uh, get our act together and uh, making a lot of little mistakes and uh, yeah, making things very, very difficult for ourselves. But uh, anyway, we continue on and uh, we will try and uh, get away from this group behind. Verstappen now is uh, back ahead of uh, Daniel Ricciardo and uh, now uh, is going to try and get past us as we go very deep into the second to last corner, trying to leave a bit of space on the inside. That was a lot of space there and uh, that's... Okay, keep on him. He might make a mistake. Uh, yeah, it was a big mistake there, so uh, that's cost us the position to Ricciardo as well. But, you know, this might not be the worst thing for us. We can sit behind Ricciardo in the DRS now and uh, try and uh, just uh, calm everything down a little bit. We've got Leclerc behind us, but uh, Ricardo will be in the DRS of Verstappen, so they'll be running a similar pace. Uh, they'll be running a similar place, pace around us, I imagine. So, you know, maybe we can just settle into a rhythm here in fourth position. Hopefully Verstappen has the uh, pace to catch up uh, with Bottas. I don't really imagine so. The Ferraris weren't that fast through the uh, stages of qualifying uh, as uh, Hamilton and Bottas were... Uh, locking out first and second uh, until uh, Hamilton uh, did put the lap in when it mattered and lock was uh, knocked out in Q2 but uh, they were one two uh, in the first round and Bottas consistent all the way through meanwhile we've been fighting away with Charles Leclerc we go back down the outside into turn three Leclerc late on the brakes but we've just got the overlap around the outside he's got to give us the room and uh, we get back through DRS open uh, for us there and uh, that has uh, aided us in that battle uh, with Charlie Leclerc but uh, anyway, as we continue on, we uh, catch up again to Daniel Ricciardo very late on the brakes there and having to go straight on a little bit to avoid contact uh, with the back of the Red Bull car as uh, we have gotten away from uh, Charles Leclerc behind and uh, a whole uh, stack of cars uh, behind him as well, uh, sort of uh, queuing up. But uh, as we continue on, and much more controlled under the brakes this time there into turn three. And uh, now trying to get the slipstream in DRS from Daniel Ricciardo. He covers off the inside immediately. We go to the outside as weird. We head up towards turn four. Late on the brakes goes Ricciardo. We're going to try and carry the speed into the corner though. Around the outside. And we get off circuit there. A bit of a moment. And very lucky not to make any contact with Ricciardo. Who uh, safely uh, backed out of that one. Uh, I think there. So uh, Ricciardo uh, trying to uh, lose the battle to win the war there I think. And uh, he actually might have had a bit of a moment there looking at that because uh, he should have been well clear uh, with that mistake we made. So uh, we'll have a look on board with Daniel Ricciardo to see uh, what actually happened there because Ricciardo lost some time uh, mid-corner there as well. You can see on board here, yes, he had to go opposite lock uh, through the corner there and that cost him uh, some time and uh, that allowed us to uh, lose control in front of him and uh, not actually hold him up at all really. Uh, so uh, that explains... Uh, that one, here's the on board with Verstappen, and uh, yeah, you can see him uh, get uh, a bit of a swapper there, and uh, lucky he did, because we would have slammed uh, right into him there uh, if uh, he hadn't uh, dropped back that little bit. But as we continue on down the inside of Max Verstappen uh, into turn three, and we get the move done, nice drive uh, off the exit, and uh, I believe by now uh, we are running uh, the traction control again uh, once we... Uh, so we've got our pace uh, back in order. There's a replay of that move. And uh, we got that done easily uh, on Max Verstappen as uh, Antonio Giovinazzi uh, retires from the race in slow motion uh, to uh, keep that on the message on the screen for uh, a touch longer. But uh, anyway, as uh, we continue on, it's time for our first uh, pit stop of the race. And uh, it's always a bit of a wild pin entry here in Australia. You need to be very precise, which is one thing I certainly am not. So uh, into the pits we go, and uh, we're going to get a new set of the uh, medium... Uh, sorry, the soft compound tyres are not a new set. Uh, so both of those things I said were wrong. Uh, a scrub set of soft tyres uh, now on the car, and uh, they will take us through until we put the mediums uh, on the car uh, later on uh, in the race. But uh, this set only did, uh, you know, one lap in Q2, uh, sorry Q3, uh, so uh, yeah that's not really an issue as we go down the inside of Danny Kvyat and that was a nice aggressive move on the Russian and one we certainly needed to make because that was Valtteri Bottas coming out of pits right behind him, here's the replay later on the brakes, so much later uh, than Danny Kvyat with our new tyres versus his old ones and uh, right behind him, you can see that is Valtteri Bottas. That's where we'd, we would have been uh, if we didn't make that move probably side by side with him. So 
Uh, that was important, but now Bottas gets back through. We go down the inside into the first corner, uh, third corner rather, and make that move uh, back on Valtteri Bottas. So uh, this is going to be a quite a scrap uh, between us and uh, other cars now getting involved uh, behind. So uh, it is uh, far from over this one as we continue on, uh, because now it's the Ferrari of Max Verstappen uh, getting involved in the fight as we... Uh, need to leave him some space there and now Bottas is trying to get back around the outside and he's done it Bottas around the outside of the final corner and uh, apparently we made a bit of contact there uh, with Max Verstappen here's a replay of uh, what happened and we kind of just drove into each other there to be honest uh, we definitely turned back to the right but uh, Verstappen equally so uh, turned to the left you can see just there uh, on the steering wheel uh, Verstappen uh, turned to the left and uh, we uh, yeah just uh, yeah, drove into each other, you can see uh, from that angle as well, certainly. And uh, Bottas immediately able to take advantage of that. So uh, great uh, opportunistic driving there from Bottas. But Ricardo's got both of them down into the first corner. Great move, Ricardo. Bottas gets the better drive, though, and uh, is able to maintain second position. But uh, Ricardo up into third now as we head down into the first corner. Once again, a little bit deep there, and Bottas with a nice switch back. He's able to make that move. Ricardo might get through here as well. We give him a squeeze to the right-hand side, but there's nothing we can do. And Ricardo is through uh, up into second position, and now it's his turn to go chasing down the Finn, who has led so much of this race. Bottas doing a good job here uh, in Austria, but uh, that undercut uh, has got us right back into the game, as with Daniel Ricardo. But uh, continuing on further, and uh, we're struggling for pace once again, just about holding off Max Verstappen. They're running a bit wide at the first corner, but Verstappen very slow on the apex uh, as well. And he's going to uh, have another attempt down the inside into the first corner again. And uh, he really uh, blocked us off there harshly, but uh, fair enough, I suppose. Uh, we uh, did kind of uh, maintain the lead uh, ahead of him uh, going off track earlier on but now uh, from a long way back we're going to go down the inside of Daniel Ricciardo uh, of Max Verstappen oh my goodness I'm all over the place today and uh, we uh, get back past uh, the Dutchman uh, along uh, this uh, third straight uh, of the lap this is uh, a very heated fight for the podium places, but uh, we need to get our head down again and uh, find our rhythm and pace again because we've uh, lost touch with the leaders. So uh, we're going to go for an undercut uh, once again on uh, Bottas and Ricardo, and we'll see what we can do uh, with uh, some fresh boots on the car uh, in uh, the remainder of this race because, yeah, we've just dropped out of contention, uh, so we need to uh, get some uh, fresh rubber uh, on all four corners and see now. what we can do on a, a brand new set of medium compound tyres. So here we go then, out of the pit lane, and uh, hopefully we won't be in traffic, but it looks like that may happen as uh, there is a car further up the road. It is the racing point of Guan Yu Zhou, so still a decently fast car, but uh, not uh, one we want to be stuck behind when we're trying to make an undercut, and you can see just the dirty air here uh, not doing us any favours at all. I was trying to take a bit of an inside line there to see if that would help uh, clear the dirty air a bit, but it uh, just wasn't really doing anything for us. So uh, we catch up to him in the same way we did on uh, Danny Kvyat and uh, get through at the first corner. Not quite as much of a send there, uh, a bit more of a uh, safe and uh, traditional overtake. But uh, as we continue on, we'll see if that cost us uh, that time stuck behind him because there is Valtteri Bottas uh, getting out of pit lane ahead of us. So uh, there we go. We got an undercut. We uh, closed the gap. We're within DRS range now. But uh, Bottas is uh, ahead at the moment. We've got Alexander Albon uh, further up the road. He still needs to make uh, a, another stop in this one. He's going to be uh, trying to hold, it up, hold up Bottas uh, for the sake of Daniel Ricciardo as well uh, here. And uh, it looks like he's going to do a decent job of it, holding us up through the middle sector. But uh, as we continue on, Bottas goes to the inside. Albon defends. We go around the outside of both of them. Very late on the brakes, just about getting turned for the corner. And we get both of them. And Albon still manages to stay ahead of Bottas. That is perfect for us. Here's the on board with Bottas. You can see they both move to the inside at exactly the same time. Bottas just had nowhere to go. Wasn't very aggressive there. Not as much as he could have been. Albon was so focused on covering the inside there. He left the door wide open on the outside and uh, we, were, we were able to swoop past both of them. Look at that. Look to the inside. There was no space there for us, but around the outside, we were able to just swing through and uh, get a massive launch uh, on the left-hand side there and uh, made a, a very, very nice move. And uh, we look at various angles of this one to uh, cover all that off because that was a nice move 
uh, but uh, Lewis Hamilton is in for his final stop which involves a front wing change uh, for the uh, number 44 car so uh, he's obviously had uh, a coming together uh, with someone uh, in this race and uh, it's not been a great day for him has it as we get back up the inside of Bottas he's got really good straight line speed it seems and uh, we're struggling a lot uh, at the moment and uh, just trying to hold on to this lead as much uh, as we can we go on board with Valtteri Bottas and there's a replay of that re-overtaking move as we uh, kind of uh, pushed him out very harshly there but uh, it's just about fair I think uh, but very very aggressive I will admit Romain Grosjean though this is with damage to his front wing and uh, he's coming in for an additional stop in this race that's unfortunate for our teammate and uh, he's going to be uh, dropping uh, down the field so uh, not a good end uh, to his day let's see what he can do with some fresh boots and uh, all of that but uh, this is now on board with Daniel Ricciardo he goes down the inside of Valtteri Bottas into the second to last corner and he's got through what a move Daniel Ricciardo and uh, he has made that one work and uh, now he's uh, trying to make an overtaking move on us to the inside of turn three we leave him a bit of room ran out wide ourselves and uh, out onto the curb we just about stay uh, ahead but Ricardo will have the DRS and he gets through and uh, let's see if there's, we can do anything here not able to make a re-overtaking move to the inside of turn four and Ricardo is through and up into the lead uh, at uh, the home race for his Red Bull team so uh, that is a great uh, run so far for Daniel Ricardo. we'll see what we can do uh, in the rest of this one as we run a bit wide there but uh, let's try and get things back under control and uh, yeah, get this race uh, back in our favour as now we have to defend from Bottas who's trying to go around the outside and he's got through there. there's not much we can do we actually uh, take a bit of avoiding action there to make sure we don't plough into the back of him and uh, that's lost us a bit of time there through the final uh, couple of corners so uh, yeah we need to uh, try and get back past Bottas uh, and then Ricardo first up Bottas and we're going to make a big dive here down the inside of turn four and uh, make sure we get this one done really great stopping power actually that took me by surprise I was expecting to go straight off into the sand uh, there uh, how much later compared to Bottas uh, we break broke but uh, yeah we uh, managed to uh, get away with that move and now uh, Daniel Ricciardo got past uh, the uh, racing the, the Haas car though of Nick De Vries. we do the same and uh, make sure we uh, cover off Bottas in case he was getting through uh, as well but uh, yeah it uh, hasn't really worked out for us and uh, we're spending too much time fighting with Bottas and not enough time uh, trying to catch up to Daniel Ricciardo there's another uh, a very uh, defensive re-overtaking move if you like and uh, we make sure we stay ahead of him uh, once again but uh, as we continue on not covering the inside here Bottas takes that advantage down the inside but he's not able to get the turning there uh, the way we uh, can on the inside line and uh, we stay ahead Bottas back down the inside towards the first corner this time we give him a shuffle towards the inside we go around the outside carrying the speed and uh, make sure we cover him off on the inside here straight away and now he's side by side with Max Verstappen giving the Ferrari some slipstream along the straight and uh, trying to keep them side by side as we head towards turn three late on the brakes and uh, we make sure uh, to stay ahead of them but uh, not uh, by it too much unfortunately at the moment so we'll see uh, if they uh, get a good run uh, once again down the inside goes uh, Max Verstappen we get a brilliant switch back here though uh, through the right hander and uh, they just have no traction on the exit of turn three and uh, we are able to make the most of that we continue on and uh, you can see giving Verstappen a big squeeze to the inside as we run side by side through turn one and uh, we managed to stay ahead of him that's given Bottas a run on Max Verstappen again we're trying to uh, alternate the slipstream uh, between those two and trying to keep them side by side and uh, keep them fighting with each other and uh, it looks like uh, it has worked because uh, they are a fair way behind us now so uh, that is uh, great news for us we can try and push away uh, but it's not going to last long because we just simply do not have the pace that those two have at this point we're just uh, staying ahead uh, with some aggressive uh, defense we go again then as we head uh, towards the uh, final lap of this one and uh, this has uh, been a great defensive drive for us but I would have preferred to have a little bit more pace uh, in this one but up the road there is no complaints for this man Daniel Ricciardo as he rounds the final corner he's going to come across the line to win the home race for his team here in Austria and that is Antonio Giovinazzi I think 
uh, a lap down there. But uh, across the line we go then to take a, a very nice second place. Okay, good job, mate. Really well done. That was a fantastic drive. And a, a very hard fought one at that, holding off championship uh, title rival. Uh, Valtteri Bottas. Lewis Hamilton gets the driver of the day, so uh, even with a front wing change, recovering well. That's it then for another spectacular Grand Prix here in Austria, and a truly magnificent drive to hang on and take the win. Anthony, tell me, what was it that helped them achieve this success? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently. It's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be proud of the victory they secured here. Well, there you have it. Daniel Ricciardo takes the race win here in Austria for Red Bull. We finish up in second position with Valtteri Bottas in third. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. Valtteri Bottas passes his rival to take over the lead of the Drivers' Championship. Now, let's discuss, Ant, who would you say is a contender for Driver of the Day? Well, for me, it's got to be Lewis Hamilton. The multiple world champion may be the boring choice at this point, but you can't argue that he's a driver deserving of his reputation. Let's move on to the constructors. Mercedes moved to the top of the table. Meanwhile, good work from the owner drivers team this weekend who pushed themselves further up the order. Well, Ants, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Third in the drivers, third in the constructors. Not bad uh, for our team. Roman Grosjean uh, did manage to recover uh, back into the points this time, so uh, decent, very, very decent uh, for him. Uh, I think, did he beat Lewis Hamilton? I'm not entirely sure on that one, but uh, still great, great uh, try from him to get back into the points with an extra pit stop. But with how close the field is, uh, he is uh, doing some pretty special things, even uh, though we didn't see much of him in this race. Uh, that was still a, a great drive from him and uh, showcasing some uh, very, very good pace nonetheless. But uh, anyway, we actually managed, uh, I didn't mention it at the time, the, to snatch the fastest lap uh, at the end there. And uh, that grants us a, a bonus point. So uh, that's great uh, for uh, all those uh, one percenters that could uh, add up to a uh, title challenge uh, by the end of the season. We're not really, uh, we're not quite... Uh, on the pace of Bottas, but with races like this where we're able to hold him off despite him having uh, DRS the whole time, uh, just the fighting between him and Verstappen uh, on occasion uh, is, as we, uh, you know, we're trying to, to keep that fight going between those two, uh, really saved us in that one. And uh, they just dropped out and, uh, you know, had to use all their energy and power to, to, to close the gap and then uh, didn't always have enough left to uh, actually make uh, the overtake and uh, by the end we actually started to get away again uh, from those two but uh, yeah Daniel Ricciardo he was untouchable today we had nothing on him uh, he was uh, yeah always making moves he got undercuts as well and uh, yeah just uh, played this race uh, to perfection and uh, yeah took a, a rather convincing win in the end we had nothing on him uh, once he got the lead he was off and uh, racing into the distance so a uh, great drive from him as we cross the line in the dirt. The fans really seem to enjoy that. You made it look easy. Things looked close between you and your rival for a bit, but you came out on top, didn't you? Yeah, Charles was uh, struggling in this one, to be honest. You're beating all expectations. Would you say we all underestimated you? I think uh, we... Uh, again, sort of maximised what uh, we could have achieved in this race. We didn't have anything on Ricardo, but uh, with some defending, we got a good spot. How do you think this team will be feeling after that result? I think Red Bull will be uh, very, very happy with that. A home win uh, for a team is uh, always the best type. Uh, we've uh, been close before.
It was more like dodgems than Formula One today, wasn't it? Uh, I wouldn't really say that, but uh, yeah, we had a, a bit of a run-in with Max Verstappen, but uh, I think that was a 50-50 incident, to be honest. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Claire. Well, there we have it. Yeah, Charles Leclerc was struggling in this one, just didn't have the pace that Max Verstappen did around this circuit, so uh, unfortunate uh, for uh, him. But uh, anyway, we uh, we move on, and uh, we have a lot to get through. Sponsors uh, need to be renewed. Romain Grosjean uh, needs to be renewed, and uh, we have this activity timeline stuff as well so first up the activity timeline which i've accidentally just filled up with random stuff at the moment so as for the activity timeline we're going to go for the uh, simulator training for Romain Grosjean keeping his stats as good as they can possibly be we're also going to go for the uh, title sponsor uh, venue opening and the uh, second driver press tour get that acclaim rolling in as for ROD, we're going to go for an upgrade to the energy recovery and that will be on the car in time for the hungarian grand prix so now we have to renew all three of our sponsors. We're going to say goodbye to DSB Optics who have been with us for a while, but they've always been our lowest paying sponsor. And uh, we're going to say hello uh, to Zanze, Zanzare, Zanzare. I'm not sure, uh, not sure where that word comes from on the pronunciation of that. But uh, anyway, uh, they want us to get a podium. And uh, considering we've got podiums in uh, the last uh, four rounds, I think, uh, I feel like that's something we can do uh, nine times out of ten now so uh, I think that is a reasonable goal for us and uh, they are now on the car and uh, the highest paying sponsor available so uh, that is great stuff. As for the other two slots uh, we're gonna re-sign with uh, Satellite and uh, they again are one of the highest paying sponsors and all they want us to do is uh, make sure that uh, we complete a hundred laps uh, over the weekend uh, within the team which uh, is pretty easy to do even at a, with the longest track of the season uh, in Spa. If both uh, cars finish the race, that's already 88 laps. So uh, yeah, that is not a problem uh, for us. And uh, as for the final slot, we're going to go with uh, Sudo, of course, our uh, Chinese sponsor. And uh, they will uh, give us money for the fastest lap in any session, which uh, if we don't win the or get the fastest lap in the race or get pole, uh, we can easily do uh, in one of the practice sessions anyway. Normally one of us uh, will top one of the practice sessions, so uh, that's a pretty easy target as well. Uh, so there we go, all uh, sponsor slots are filled uh, once again, and uh, now you will see the uh, car with uh, all of its new stickers, but uh, same old livery, so uh, not a huge change there. But uh, it is time to try to re-sign uh, Romain Grosjean, so uh, now let's get in uh, to doing that. Uh, we're going to go with the low risk option, he accepts our uh, approach obviously, and uh, he accepts that and uh, we are signed with him for the rest of the season. But uh, fast forwarding through the activity timeline now and we get a uh, facility upgrade on the chassis uh, department, we get a uh, power unit upgrade uh, on the car as well. That's a major horsepower uh, upgrade. Uh, that one on the far left there, that's been coming for quite a while. I believe that failed uh, earlier on, as most of our upgrades uh, seem to do. It's uh, The fail rate's been uh, quite ridiculous for us. Uh, in F1 2019, I believe we didn't have a single upgrade fail, or maybe like one. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, been quite different uh, in this one, but uh, all our bad luck's come at once. But we're uh, battling on and pushing through and uh, still doing a decent enough job to stay uh, in the title fight uh, this season with some uh, lucky and uh, decent race results. But uh, we have enough points to go for a durability upgrade. I'm not going to do that, though. There's not really any point at this time. We're not really struggling for uh, engine wear, so, yeah, we're not going to focus on that at the moment. But, uh, yeah, other than that, then, there's not a lot... Uh, left to cover so I will say uh, thank you so much for watching this uh, all the way to the end and I will see you next time for the British Grand Prix uh, at Silverstone another track I very very much enjoy so uh, looking forward to that one so yes thank you for watching and I will see you then goodbye